Hello everyone, we are going to review uh, Unit 3 and we're going to go topic by topic and hopefully this helps you out a great deal. Alright, so we're going to start with number 1 and number 1 says which relation is a function? Just important to kind of like say, okay, it's looking for a function. Alright, so I'm just going to underline the x's because if the x repeats normally it's not a function all right so we're going to go negative one zero there we go negative one and negative one that those x's repeat and they go to different y values so right there you could say that is not a function and they're looking for a function so we're going to cross out a then we have two one zero negative one and two there we go two is repeating going to different y's so we have a negative four and a positive four that is not a function every x must have its own y that is gone so now we're going to go two one and here we go with one and one repeating and if that one and one repeats goes to a different y that is not a function the answer must be d so we have two one zero negative one and negative two doesn't matter what's going on with the y's just the x's um if the x does not repeat it's a function so this is a function so we are saying that d is the answer which set of order pairs is not a function so you're looking for an X that repeats going to different Y's so we have three two one three three repeats and goes to a different Y this three is attached to one this three is attached to two that is not allowed every X must have its own Y this is not a function And it's not a function so that is the answer no need to check the other pairs the other relations number three which table represents a relation that that is not a function not okay so we have one and the ones repeat and this one is attached to four this one is attached to five this is not a function by the way we just want to point out you see this two goes to six this two goes to six that alone does not not make it a function all right it's so remember if the x repeats and goes to the same y like in this case two goes to six twice that is the same point and it would still be a function but since one goes to four and one goes to five that's where it is not a function so this one um, is a little bit tricky, but it's going to say, well, actually it asks you, which graph represents a linear function? There's two things that's hap that are they're asking for here. Number one, linear. Number two, function. So I am just going to write down which ones I think are linear. This is nonlinear. And since they're looking for a linear function, this is out this is linear this is nonlinear this is out they're looking for a linear function now to test to see if this is a function obviously b number two is the answer to test to see if this is a function we're going to do a vertical line test and I'm going to draw my vertical line right here. Since this hits the circle twice, once there and once there, this is not a function. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the vertical line test right here. And it only hits once. This is a function. And I am going to do the vertical line test right about here. And I'm going to do another vertical line test right about there. 
it only goes through once. Let me just uh, straighten that out. And that means it's a function. But this one, number three, is a nonlinear function. They're looking for a linear function. So number two is your answer. So you could circle that. All right, topic number two, to identify whether the function is linear or nonlinear. This is a nonlinear function. So the reason why it's nonlinear is because it's not in the format of y equals mx plus b. It must be in that format. The slope is not constant. Right? So that would make it nonlinear. And also, the variable can uh, not be in the denominator. All right, so any of those um, you could kind of write down basically saying why it's nonlinear, that all of those would work. All right, what are other nonlinear equations? So we're going to put three down. This is nonlinear, y equals x squared, or y equals 3x squared. When the variable, when the exponent is next to the variable, it is nonlinear. That makes it a U-shape or of some sort, and that does not work, all right? That is not linear. And so we have y equals, like in this example here, we have 4 over x. That is nonlinear. And then the last one is y equals 3 to the x power. Remember, you can't have the exponent as the variable, or the variable as the exponent. We'll change it around. All right, so the exponent, when it's next to the variable, that's nonlinear, like in number one. Number two, when the variable is in the denominator, that is nonlinear. And then number three, when the variable is the actual exponent, that is nonlinear. All right, and if we had a chance to graph x squared, just like this right here, if we press graph, you'll see that that is a u-shape. The next thing that I will graph for you is the, like say, if you have 3 to the, and the x is down below in the denominator, I told you that that would be nonlinear, that would result in the red graph. And then the last one is when the actual exponent is the variable itself, like 2 to the x power. That would be the graph in black, and you could tell all of these are nonlinear. All right. And so let's go on to number two. Which part of the graph is a, has a constant rate of change? We are looking for a straight part of the graph. So this is the only straight part of the graph right there. Everything else is curving. Take a look at that in blue. That's a curve. That is not constant. This is a curve right here. And also, this is a curve right there. All right, so all of that in blue is curving. The only thing that is not curving that has a constant rate of change is from negative 4 to the x of 1. So it starts at negative 4 and ends at 1. So we're just going to go down here. Negative 4 to 1, that's B. That is the constant rate of change. Remember, constant must be straight. If it curves at all, it's not constant. Which equation below, listed below, is linear? This is, remember I said, exponent next to the variable, nonlinear. So that is out. Um, B y equals x to the third there we go another exponent next to the variable that is not allowed all right that would result in a u shape a u a u the exponent can't be next to the variable d is out and this is y equals mx plus b 
in this C, this is the answer. That is linear. The slope is a half, and that's constant. And the B is zero. This is direct variation, um, and it's straight. It goes through the origin. Which phrase describes a nonlinear function? Perimeter. Anything about perimeter is not nonlinear. I know it, it, it kind of, you're thinking about perimeter of a shape, a rectangle. Um, it is straight, straight lines. And if you know that the formula for perimeter of a rectangle is perimeter equals two times the length times the width. Remember, like uh, the opposite sides of a rectangle are equal to each other. So you're adding all the sides. Um, to get the perimeter. So if you're adding all the sides, it's two times the length because there's lengths like two, like that opposite side and two, um, two widths, right? So that's about it. So anyway, that is linear. So that's out because they're looking for nonlinear cost of the cell phone based of data use. Now think about it. If you're using the using data and it costs like five dollars uh, for each gig that you use and you're using two gigs, that's ten dollars, three gigs, that's fifteen dollars, four gigs, that's twenty dollars. You're, you're increasing at the same increasing and running at the same rate. So that means this is linear as well. It doesn't change rates. Um, from like when you're using it, the cost of a cell phone is based on the data that you use. All right, the cost of a ga gasoline and the functions of gallons purchased, this is the same thing. You drive up to a, um, hopefully none of you are driving, but if you drive up to a gas station and it's like $3.20 for a gallon of gas, obviously one gallon is going to be three twenty. Two gallons is going to be six forty. And so on and so forth, 320 for each gallon that you're buying. So this is also linear. Volume for a cube, if you're looking for the formula, if you know it, it's S cubed. All right, side cubed, right? So remember I told you about exponent next to a variable that is not allowed. That is going to result in a nonlinear function. So D is your answer number five which of the following sets of coordinates could not be a part of a linear function probably one of the trickiest questions on this entire review sheet so i'm gonna say okay function the every x must have its own y so i'm gonna just check the x's and i'm gonna see if i could cancel out anything none of the x's repeat there none of the x's repeat there there none of the x's repeat here none of the x's repeat here so every one of these relations is a function so we have to figure out which ones are linear now you can do this one way by using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 figure out the slope twice the slope is the same that means the rate is constant and that means it's linear. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look at the pattern. All right. So this is my X. This is my X. This is my X. If I go from zero to one, I added one. If I go from one to three, I added two to get there from one to three. So that's just the X that alone you can't tell if it's linear or not, right? So if I have it, so if I'm going to take this and I'm going to take the Y values, four goes to five by adding one. So as the X added one, the Y added one. Sounds good? All right. Now, as the X adds two, the Y should add two, and it does from five to seven plus two. That is linear. So the slope remained the same there. I didn't figure out slope, but I know that the pattern remains the same. Remember, you could always graph these also. Straight lines are linear. All right. So let me go down to two and two 
goes to 4. 2 goes to 4 by adding 2. 4 goes to 6 by adding 2. Let's see if the y remains the same. The increase of the y is 15 to 30. You're adding 15. 30 to 45, you're adding 15. That is linear. As long as it remains the same and it kind of coincides with what's happening with the x's, then you're good. So now, here's 2 going to 4, 4 going to 6. I'm adding 2 each time. Now, 6 goes to 9. I'm adding 3. 9 goes to 15. I'm adding 6. That is not the same. This one is the one that's nonlinear. Remember, if I put it in a table like this, x and y, 2, 6, 4, 9, and then I go 6, 15, obviously I'm adding 2 to get to the next x. I added 3 to get to the next y. While the x added 2, the y added 3. Now I add another 2. So what should happen here to make it linear is to add 3. It doesn't. It adds 6. And that's the reason why it's non it's nonlinear, this one. And D is linear. All right. So number six, the ordered pairs represents which the ordered pairs represents a linear function. So they're telling you it's linear. I'm going to change all of these to decimals because uh, I'm a little confused at what's going on here. So one divided by four, if you just put it into your calculator and press the enter button, it's 0 0.25. Then two and a half comma is 2.5. If you put the half, one divided by two, you get the 0.5. Put the two in front of it, and that's basically it. So those are the first set of coordinates in this relation. One and three-fourths. If you divide three divided by four, it's 1.75. And then 2 and 3 fourths, 3 fourths again is 0.75, so it's 2.75. You have to find out what the next x and y will be based on the pattern. And this is a pattern that's a linear function, so that means it, they, they have to tell you that because it has to remain the same throughout. So to get from 0.25 to 1.75, all you would have to do to figure out that jump is 1.75 minus 2 uh, uh, minus 0.25 and this is 1.5 so that means the next x since it's linear must be from 1.75 to 1.75 and you have to add that 1.5 to it and let's see what that comes out to be. It's 3.25. 3.25. Now, let's figure out the y's. Remember, they already told you this is linear. So, from 2.5 to 2.75, there was a 0.25 increase. So, I'm going to put 0.25. From 2.75 plus 0.25, that's 3. And you can do that right in your calculator if you don't believe me. And that's it. All right, those are the next sets of values for X and Y. If you had to do another, if you had to figure out another point, then you would add 1.5 to this, and you'd get 4.75, and then 0.25 to the y, and you get 3.25. You could keep on going forever. All right, well, we don't want to do that because we're not, we, we just don't want to do that. All right, because they're asking one for one x and y, and that's, that's basically it. All right, so let's go on to the next topic. Topic number three, 
Kelly created two functions. Good for Kelly. Um, function B is right there in the table and function A is right there, which the statement about the rates of changes are true. So we're just talking about the rate of change. So I'm just going to go ahead and underline the rate of change from function A. Remember the rate of change is slope and slope is the number that is before the X, the variable. All right. In order to get the rate from a table, if you don't know this, please study X1, Y1, X2, Y2. By the way, I am starting with those two points. You can pick any two points that you want. Keep them close to each other because um, the closer they are, uh, the, when you subtract and you get that fraction, you don't have to reduce the fraction. If you pick points that are really far away from each other, you'll have to reduce to reduce the fraction and nobody wants to do uh, more work than they have to um, because this is math and you don't you know you don't want to do work unnecessarily so we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 you only have to figure out slope once and then you could compare the functions the the uh, the rates of change so we have 7 minus 4 that's y2 minus y1 as labeled in my table and then 1 minus 0 so we have m equals 7 minus 4 5 6 7 that's 3 and then 1 minus 0 is 1 so I'm just gonna leave it 3 so function a is negative 2 this is the slope and function B which is 3 have equal rates of change no they don't liar so m function a is negative 2 function b is 3 they both have negative rates of liar all right function a is negative 2 function b is 3 they have zero rates of change liar function b is 3 and function a is negative 2 Function B has a greater rate of change than function A, yes. All right, and that is that. John and Mary work jobs over the summer break. The equation shows Lucy's earnings. I don't know where Lucy came from. and Actually, I don't know where John and uh, Mary... I don't know where Mary came from. So I'm going to cross out Mary... And I'll put Lucy. All right, that's better. So uh, the equation shows Lucy's earnings. So here's the equation in Lucy's earnings. So M equals 21. Congrats. All right, Lucy makes pretty good money there. That's a really good job. Uh, but John's earnings, we have to figure out. And obviously, we're going to do X1, Y1, X2 y2 y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and uh, we have y2 which is 104 minus 52 and then 8 minus 4 for the x2 minus x1 so on the top we do have 52 minus 4 uh divided by 4 if you don't want to go through any of that, just go ahead and press the fraction symbol and you put 104 minus 52 and then over 8 minus 4 and you will get the answer. The calculator will do the work for you. M equals 13. So that is John's earnings and Lucy 21. All right. So how much more does Mary earn than John? Mary, you're gone. Lucy. How much more does Lucy earn than John? Okay. So Lucy is 21. John is 13. So we're going to get 21 minus 13 together. And it's not $1. It's not $2. It's not $5. It is eight dollars. That's it. 
That's how you do that one. All right, number three, compare the rates of change again, again. Don't pick a negative number to compare the rates of change. We're going to do the X1, Y1. You see a table? This is what you normally would have to do to compare rates of change. I'm not going to write Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. I'm just going to put Y2 is 16. Y1 is 10. X2, X1. So we have M equals 6 over 2. 6 over 2 is 3. So function 1 has a 3. So now the value of y, y, is, is an equal sign, equal sign. 3 times the value of x, 3 times x is 3x. Increase, that's a plus symbol, plus 6. So the slope for this one, the rate, is 3. 3, 3. Function 1 and function 2 have the same rate of change. Which one is true? This one. That's it. They both have a rate of change of 3. All right, number 4, AT&T and Verizon offer cell phone plans where their customers, where Y is the total cost, and X represents the total cost, the cost per text message. Verizon cell phone plan is represented by this. This is Verizon's. AT&T's cell phone plan is listed in the table. So here's Verizon Wireless's uh, cell phone plan based on the information above who which company charges more per text so I'm just gonna put Verizon Wireless is 15 cents per text every time you see a table this is your input input is your X the output is the Y input is the X the output is the Y so every single time a table should be um, listed that is a horizontal table the X should be on the top that's the input and then the Y should be on the bottom part that is the output all right so this is going to be my X1 this is going to be my Y1 this is going to be my X2 this is going to be my Y2 just be careful with that because this is a horizontal table a little bit different Y2 minus Y1 equal over X2 minus X1 so we're going to put y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to have to get my calculator going on this one. Press the fraction symbol. I'm going to have 20 minus 15 and 100 minus 50. And I'm going to get 5 over 50. And you see that arrow down? That means simp. Simplify. 1 over 10. Now, since we're talking about money, I'm going to divide that. And I'm going to convert it into a decimal. Because, and actually I don't even have to divide it. Uh, because you see this 1 over 10. I could press the double arrows. And I will get... A fraction into a decimal let me just show you that one more time it went away 0 0.1 so if I have 0 0.1 as money what do I have to add to it a zero because 10 cents makes money uh, makes sense um, and 10 cents makes sense yeah uh, it makes sense for you to add the zero because money is rounded to the nearest hundredth there's a hundred pennies in a dollar uh, so, which one, which company charges more? Verizon charges five cents more per text messages, text message, and that's it. Not five dollars, by the way. This is five cents. All right, be careful with that one. All right, topic four. The table in the graph below show data about the number of days spent saving about spent saving and the uh, amount it should say saved by Adam amount saved by Adam and Bianca all right so uh, which statement correctly compares the saving speed just so you know um, I'm just going to use the x1 here and the y1 
and X2 and Y2. It's not a really good example um, because this uh, Bianca's savings is not really. Uh, well, let's go and let's see what how much Bianca saves. So we have 26 minus 17 and then we have 8 minus 5. Let's see how much Bianca saves. We're going to use our calculator. 26 minus 17 over 8 minus 5. Yep. So $3 money in dollars per day. And if you you ever get confused about that, um 26 over 27, this is dollars. Right? Because it says it. And then 8 and 5, this is these are days. Because it says it. Right? So when you divide it, dollars per day, $3 per day. Like that's how I figure it out. Like okay, that's what it means. If they ever ask you like kind of like a question where how does the slope or rate relate to this question? You have to throw the same thing back at them that they're putting in the table here, right? You don't have to make it up. So Bianca saves $3 per day. Okay, so let's see Adam. Adam starts here, and we have to pick up another point that is in the corner of a box so we could actually count whole numbers. So I'm just going to go over and up to the right. So this is one. That's one day. And this is three. See, one, two, three dollars. Hey, three dollars. So Adam saves three dollars also. That's incredible. All right. Each day, Adam saves three dollars more than Bianca. No. Each day, Adam saves three dollars less. No. And they both save three dollars. C is the answer. And D is canceled out. So here we go. Adam and Bianca save three dollars a day. They'll be rich in no time. All right, function A and function B. There we go. There's another table. Uh, which function has the greater rate of change? And make sure to include the values of the rates of change in your answer. I am going to go straight down to the positive numbers and label X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So I have Y2 minus Y1 and X2 minus X1. I have 2 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1. All right. Uh, greater rate of change, 1. Okay. I'm going to pick this point. And I'm going to go and pick this point. So time in minutes, that's three. And distance travel, two. So we have three and two. So this one is three over two over three, rise over run. And obviously function A is greater because that is further away from zero. So being sure to include the values of rates of change, this is not a multiple choice question. This is a... Uh, open-ended question that you do have to explain. And that's it. Which function has the greater rate of change? Function A has the greater rate of change, uh, has a greater rate of change than function B. Function A's rate of change is 1, while function B's rate of change is 2 over 3. If they ever tell you to use, like, you have to follow exactly what it is that they say. It says be sure to use the rates um, to include the values for the rates and rates of change in your answer. So I had to make sure that that was in my answer. Number three. I don't want to say that name. All right. So I'm not even going to try. Um, Bianca, someone and Bianca are completing, competing to uh, see who can save the most money in one month. And the graph represents the amount that this unnamed person, this named person right there that I can't pronounce, saves per day. The table represents the amount of Bianca. Uh, all right. And so that means you just have to find the rate of change. And this is this, this is one that we just did in the other uh, question, one, two, three. So, $3. And Bianca's over here, 8 
a one um, x1 y1 x2 y2 and we have 24 minus 17 and then 10 minus 5 and then we're going to put that in the calculator and see uh, what is up with that 24 minus 17 10 minus 5 one and two fifths so if you ever really wanted to convert it to a decimal or just convert uh, a decimal to a fraction fraction to a decimal you click those that double arrow right here and it does it so this is 1.4 and if we're talking about money a dollar 40 so obviously uh that person over there determine who saves more per day uh yes this person saves more than bianca per day uh because they're saving three dollars and bianca is saving a dollar forty and that is it a is your answer all right topic number five and the last topic which is really good um how does the rate of change of the graph compare to the function y equals negative 6x minus 2 same thing comparing rates of change pretty much this whole test is the same thing m equals negative 6 uh for this because it's the number next to x now let's go ahead and the graph i'm going to pick this point right here it's in the corner and this point right here you could pick this point right here if you want uh you only need two points so we're going down two so that's negative two and we're going to the right one that's positive one so we have a negative two slope over one that slope is negative two so the graph has a rate of change of negative six no it doesn't the graph is negative two both the graph and the equation have the rate of change of negative two no both the graph and the equation have a rate of change of negative six no they don't the graph has a rate of change of negative two yes it does and uh, the equation has a rate of change of negative six. Yes, it does. D is your answer. That's it. All right. Very simple, uh, straightforward. Which function has the least rate of change? Now they give you four different functions. All right. So let's get right to it. In a graph, you do always use rise over run. So this is five. Be careful. This is going up. This is increasing by fives, the x axis. And then this is not one. This is increasing by hundreds. So I'm going to put m equals 100 over 5. m equals 20. And that's 20 degrees per minute. 20 degrees per minute. All right, let's go to C. I'm going to try to avoid most of the negatives. So this is my X1. This is my X2. Remember, this is a horizontal table, so be careful. Y2 and Y1 and Y2 will be on the bottom. So I'm just going to put M equals Y2. 1 minus from the formula and then negative 2. This back-to-back -back negative um is it becomes a positive it's like keep change change uh that you learned a million times but we don't say keep change change in the eighth grade it's just like the double negative two negatives in a row becomes a positive all right so and then x2 minus x1 on the bottom so this is m equals three over one and m equals three so we have an m of 20 we have an m of three Let's go on to the bottom right here. B equals 7. I don't know why I said B. That's an M. Just saying. M equals 7. So that's the slope right there. And then the cost of renting, uh, the cost of a house cleaning service was $10 per hour. That's the key word where you would have the rate next to that per. And the initial fee is $20. So this would be y equals 10x plus 20 with the m being next to the x that's 10. so let's see what this question is at oh, the question asking which function has the least rate of change so 20 
three, ten. Let me circle it so it looks. All right, and seven. So three has the least rate of change. So C is your answer for that one. All right, so Sam wants to buy pizza for lunch. There are three pizzerias by her house. The price of the slice of pizza for each pizzeria is shown below. I don't know why pizza is so expensive, but it is. Um, but Alfonso's pizza is not that expensive. It's $1.65. That's pretty, pretty good. All right, for a slice of pizza, it's $1.65. Remember, the number next to the X is the rate for that pizza. Cheesy pizza, uh, the value of the total price is $1.10 per slice plus $1.50 per box. None of that makes sense, but we're talking about wants to buy pizza for lunch, uh, the price per slice of pizza. So we don't care about the box, right? We would just want the slice of pizza. So a dollar ten per slice. So we're going to talk about M being a dollar ten, right? This dollar fifty is like kind of like the initial value, I guess. I don't know. It's for per box. I don't, it doesn't make any sense, but anyway. The table, you have to do x2, x1, y2, minus y1, over x2, minus x1. So it's 3, minus 150, $3 minus 150, and 2 minus 1. So 3 minus 150 is 1. If you put it in the calculator, it's 150, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's 150 per slice. So we have these three pizzas, uh, three pizzerias. One sells for a dollar fifty. Uh, one sells a slice for a dollar ten, and one sells a slice for a dollar sixty-five. Which pizzeria charges the least? Cheesy pizzeria. C. Right. This cancels, cancels, cancels. All right. Alfonso's. If if Alfonso's charges a dollar sixty-five. Classic charges dollar fifty. Cheesy, doll ten. Alfonso's is a doll sixty-five, and classic is different, so doll doesn't even make sense to put them together unless they were the same price, All right? So cheesy pizza charges the least. Okay, that ends our review sheet. I hope that helped you out, and thank you very much for watching.